Jim R.I.C.K.A.D.S. Prediction Oil prices could soon drop 50% and is gold set to rise in 2018. Oil has had a spectacular run the past two years. From $29.42 per barrel on January 15, 2016, oil has risen to $57.36 per barrel as of last Friday, a 95% gain in less than 23 months. Much of this gain reflects the determination of the world's two largest oil exporters Saudi Arabia and Russia to limit output in order to firm up prices. The duopoly of Saudi Arabia and Russia has proved much more effective than OPEC at maintaining the discipline needed to control oil prices. OPEC members such as Iran and Iraq are notorious for cheating on OPEC quotas. The duopoly is more disciplined. Yet, this kind of manipulation is a two-edged sword. Saudi Arabia and Russia have as much interest in not letting prices get too high as they do in not letting them get too low. Right now oil prices are at the high end of the range the duopola consider acceptable. Oil prices have nowhere to go but down, one Saudi Arabia and Russia do some cheating of their own. Investors who move now stand to reap huge gains, as the duopoly drive prices lower in order to protect their market share and once again shut in the capacity of their competitors in the fracking industry. Despite the ebbs and flows of oil supply and demand and technical aspects of trading, the overriding dynamic in global energy markets is straightforward. In any market, there are price takers and price makers. The only price makers in global energy markets are Saudi Arabia and Russia, if they act together. Saudi Arabia and Russia, the duopoly, together produce 25% of the world's oil exports. That's more than the next six major oil exporters combined, and those others have nowhere near the degree of coordination as the duopoly. Equally important is that Saudi Arabia has the lowest production costs of any major producer, about $4 per barrel. It is certainly the case that Saudi Arabia likes higher oil prices, but oil could sink to $10 per barrel and Saudi Arabia would still make money, while most other exporters would lose money or cease production. The duopoly face a familiar dilemma that could confront any business. On the one hand they like high prices and the revenue that goes with it. On the other hand, high prices have two perils. The first is that high prices encourage competition in the form of marginal output that can take market share. The second is that high prices can produce a recession in developed economies that reduces oil consumption across the board. Obviously the duopoly would like higher prices, but this just encourages output from marginal producers especially those using hydraulic fracturing technology, fracking, in places like the Permian Basin in Texas. The solution to this dilemma is an optimization plan using linear programming. The way to model this is to ask, what is an optimal price that destroys competition and maximizes revenue at the same time? Saudi Arabia ran this program in mid-2014. They concluded that the optimal price is $60 per barrel. Of course, just because the computer says $60 does not mean you can't stick the landing in the real world. There are many factors that go into oil pricing including geopolitics, central bank-induced inflation or disinflation, and technical trading patterns. In particular, once a price moves radically in a macro market there is a tendency to overshoot something. That is quite common in currency markets for example. That said, Saudi Arabia set out in mid-2014 to crush the price of oil in order to destroy the fracking industry which had emerged as a major competitive threat in 2011. The impact of the Saudi plan and both the old and new trading ranges for oil are illustrated in the chart below. While the Saudi plan was effective, the fracking industry did not simply disappear. In fact, the initial response of the frackers was to pump more oil. This additional output plus overshooting accounts for the dip in oil prices to the $30 per barrel level in early 2016. The reason frackers produced more oil at lower prices was because of their financial constraints. The frackers had loaded up on leases, equipment, and labor during the good times of $100 per barrel oil prior to 2014. This was done with high leverage which burdened the frackers with fixed interest and principal payments. Frackers did this in the belief that oil prices would stay above $70 per barrel. Some fracker cost structures ran as high as $130 per barrel to achieve profitability. Many of those costs were fixed, at least in the short run. 
pumping oil at a loss was better than not pumping at all because it generated some cash flow to pay interest while the frackers waited for better times. The better times never came. Oil prices did bounce off the early 2016 lows and have stabilized closer to $45 per barrel but that is still not high enough to support most of the frackers. As the bankruptcies and debt restructurings piled up, a new wave of frackers entered the game. This new wave purchased assets from failing frackers at cents on the dollar and continued exploration and drilling with improved cost structures. Some of the new wave frackers were actually from the original wave in 2011 but had managed to hold on either because they had piles of cash from their first financings or because they had cut costs sufficiently to stay in the game for a while. Saudi Arabia perceived the threat from the new wave of frackers and decided to go for the kill. To do this, they enlisted Russia and created the duopoly. Now the stage is set for a new round of oil price declines and another bloodbath in the fracking fields. What are my predictive analytic models telling us about the prospects for oil prices in 2018? Right now the action nodes are telling us that energy prices are heading for a fall. The recent bilateral production agreement between Saudi Arabia and Russia combined with the multilateral production agreement in OPEC is designed to cap output and stabilize prices around the $60 level. These new agreements basically reaffirm production limits that had been agreed earlier this year. Those agreements account for the run-up in the oil price since mid-2017. Yet, the frackers have not gone away. Some are hanging by their fingernails with negative cash flow in the hope of higher prices. The duopoly are set to disappoint them. Now that the duopoly and OPEC production quotas are set, the cheating can begin. Perennial cheaters such as Iran and Iraq will be the first to overproduce. Venezuela's economy is in free fall and it will certainly take the opportunity to overproduce also. Once supply increases, the duopoly will tag along with their own increases in order not to lose market share. The frackers talk a good game when it comes to profitability, but they can't he walk the walk. As the saying goes, fish got to swim, birds got to fly, and Texas wildcatters got to pump oil. With the $60 per barrel cap firmly in place and oil prices near that level, the price has nowhere to go but down. Prices near the top of the trading range will induce additional output. This time the frackers want to get reprieved because their bankers, stockholders, and bondholders want to allow it. Losing money is not a sustainable business model. Is gold set to rise in 2018? Strengths the best performing precious metal for the week was palladium, but it clocked in with a price decline of 1.41%. In an interview with Sharps Pixley S. Lowry Williams, precious metals specialist Ted Butler said his analysis shows that, for at least the past nine months or longer, Goldman Sachs and Yup Morgan Chase are taking 80% of all COMEX physical deliveries of gold and silver. Butler believes that someone would only take delivery if you thought the price was going to go up in value. A Sharia-compliant gold ETF targeting Malaysian institutional investors will be made available by Afin Wang Asset Management. The ETF was listed on the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange on Wednesday. Traders are still reluctant to bet against gold even with impending tax cuts and rate hikes, thought to be negative for the yellow metal. Bearish positions on bullion futures and options were at a five-year low last week. Weaknesses the worst performing precious metal for the week was platinum, down 5.53%. Traders surveyed were overwhelmingly bearish ahead of next week's Federal Reserve rate hike expectation. The world's second biggest market for gold, India, reported a third consecutive month of decreased imports. Additionally, Australia's Perth Mint reported gold sales of 23,901 ounces last month, about half of the prior month's volume. David Govett, head of precious metals trading at Mayrex Spectron in London, said, The rate hike is now looming and people are suddenly realizing that gold may not be the most attractive long position at the moment. Although bullion is heading for the first back-to-back -back annual advances, since 2012, traders have recently dented those gains, writes Eddie Vanderwalt of Bloomberg. Online searches for buy Bitcoin continue to far outstrip searches for buy gold. More and more investors are viewing Bitcoin as the new golden way to store money outside the control of any government or company. Opportunities 
Gold could trend higher in 2018 as real borrowing costs continue to be low in historical terms and fears of equity and bond correction encourage investors, reports Bloomberg. The yellow metal is set to rise marginally as real interest rates stay low, and the dollar weakens, says Bart Malik, global head of commodity strategy at TD Securities. China's gold consumption will continue to rise in 2018 following this year's demand of over 1,000 tons, up from 975 tons in 2016. Zijin mining is bullish on gold as the dollar is seen in a downward cycle. Central banks may add to gold reserves amid uncertainty in global currency system, reports Bloomberg. Commerceban forecasts gold to average $1,325 in 2018 on the back of low or even negative interest rates and ongoing political uncertainty. The next big short is coming as hedge funds prepare to bet against Bitcoin. The introduction of Bitcoin futures contracts at major hedge funds will make it easier to bet on a decline in the popular digital currency. And as Bitcoin surges, nobody cares that about $90 million was hacked from coins tether and nice hash. Meanwhile, validating a transaction can cost as much as $20, and the market is currently illiquid with more buyers than sellers. Contributing to the speculative nature of Bitcoin is the fact that Coinbase now has 13.3 million users, more than Charles Schwab's 11.7 users built up over decades, implying that digital currency investors lack understanding of the processes involved. Last month, someone moved 25,000 bitcoins worth around $159 million to an online exchange in preparation for selling. This demonstrates the potential volatility of about 40% of bitcoin being held by around 1,000 users. Since bitcoin is a currency and not a security, there are no rules against a trade where one group agrees to buy enough to push the price up and cash out in minutes, reports Bloomberg's Olga Karif. Lastly in bad bitcoin news. A new company, Big Blockchain Intelligence Group, will be collecting users' Bitcoin data to try and address anti-money laundering, AML, statutes, and selling your data to law enforcement. Threats One of the biggest companies in the S&P 500 index, General Electric GE, will be cutting 12,000 jobs as demand for gas turbines is down with customers turning toward renewable energy sources. Share prices fell to the lowest in six years on Wednesday with the stock falling 44% in this year alone. A company this large having big troubles might indicate the economy is not as strong as thought. US and European banks potentially face billions in loan losses with the unraveling of Steinhoff International this week, when its share price fell 84% in three days as it was revealed it has engulfed in an accounting scandal. New tax reform will sharply reduce interest deductibility on tax returns, which will raise the effective cost of debt relative to cash flow, and ultimately stifle companies to raise debt for buybacks. A sharp fall in buybacks will lower net U.S. stock purchases and lower bank lending and credit issuance, which will tighten liquidity. This comes at a time when U.S. corporate investment is at its lowest in history, according to a macro strategy partnership report released this week. Among the groups most negatively impacted by the latest tax reform bill include upper-middle-class families in high-tax areas, graduate students, government workers, and public school teachers. Many members of these groups lean Democrat, which Republicans are well aware of, writes Salil Kapoor of Bloomberg. This poses the question of what will happen to high-tax states such as New York and California, where taxes could no longer be deductible from federal tax returns. When Kansas implemented similar tax cuts in 2012, the economy slowed, saw lower than expected revenues, and was forced to make huge cuts to government programs a priority of the current administration. Economic policy analyst Stephen Moore, who advised Donald Trump's campaign on tax policy, said, it has death to Democrats. But not so fast, Democrats, after calculating their new tax burden, could easily decide it is no longer affordable to stay in high tax burden states as California, New York and New Jersey, and move elsewhere. Unexpectedly, then, red states might see an influx of many new Democrats into this dilemma as an optimization plan using linear programming. The way to model this is to ask, what is an optimal price that destroys competition and maximizes revenue at the same time? Saudi Arabia ran this program in mid-2014. They concluded that the optimal price is $60 per barrel. Of course, just because the computer says $60 does not mean you can't stick the landing in the real world. 
There are many factors that go into oil pricing including geopolitics, central bank induced inflation or disinflation, and technical trading patterns. In particular, once a price moves radically in a macro market there is a tendency to overshoot something. That is quite common in currency markets for example. That said, Saudi Arabia set out in mid-2014 to crush the price of oil in order to its. Much of this gain reflects the determination of the world's two largest oil exporters Saudi Arabia and Russia to limit output in order to firm up prices. The duopoly of Saudi Arabia and Russia has proved much more effective than OPEC at maintaining the discipline needed to control oil prices. OPEC members such as Iran and Iraq are notorious for cheating on OPEC quotas. The duopoly is more disciplined. Yet, this kind of manipulation is a two-edged sword. Saudi Arabia and Russia have as much interest in not letting prices get too high as they do in not letting them get too low. Right now oil prices are at the high end of the range the duopoly consider acceptable. Oil prices have nowhere to go but down, one Saudi Arabia and Russia do some cheating of their own. Investors who move now stand to reap huge gains, as the duopoly drive prices lower in order to protect their market share and once again shut in the capacity of their competitors in the fracking industry. Despite the ebbs and flows of oil supply and demand and technical aspects of trading, the overriding dynamic in global energy markets is straightforward. In any market, there are price takers and price makers. The only price makers in global energy markets are Saudi Arabia and Russia, if they act together. Saudi Arabia and Russia, the duopoly, together produce 25% of the world's oil exports. That's more than the next six major oil exporters combined, and those others have nowhere near the degree of coordination as the duopoly. Equally important is that Saudi Arabia has the lowest production costs of any major producer, about $4 per barrel. It's certainly the case that Saudi Arabia likes higher oil prices, but oil could sink to $10 per barrel and Saudi Arabia would still make money, while most other exporters would lose money or cease production. The duopoly face a familiar dilemma that could confront any business. On the one hand they like high prices and the revenue that goes with it. On the other hand, high prices have two perils. The first is that high prices encourage competition in the form of marginal output that can take market share. The second is that high prices can produce a recession in developed economies that reduces oil consumption across the board. Obviously the duopoly would like higher prices, but this just encourages output from marginal producers especially those using hydraulic fracturing technology, fracking, in places like the Permian Basin in Texas. The solution. Jim R.I.C.K.A.D.S. Prediction, oil prices could soon drop 50% and is gold set to rise in 2018. Oil has had a spectacular run the past two years. From $29.42 per barrel on January 15, 2016, oil has risen to $57.36 per barrel as of last Friday, a 95% gain in less than 23 months.